dear friends, uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce you the best panel that one can imagine on the issue of gold and its status in India. But what I'm going to do is just briefly introduce you who is on the panel today. We have Dr. K.C. Chakraborty, the Deputy Governor from the Reserve Bank of India, and he's been the Deputy Governor at the RBI now for nearly five years. Then we have Mr. Rajesh Khosla, who has been working since 2001 as the India representative for the PAM Switzerland for its precious metal activities in India. Then we have Mr. Amresh Acharya, he is the Director of Investment from the World Gold Council. And then we have our local friend, Mr. Bhaskar Bhatt. He is from Tanishk. He brings in the experience of Tanishk jewelries. And then we have with us Vivek Kohl, as you all would know, he is the author of that beautiful book, Easy Money. The advantage of having him here is having a peep in the future. Thomas Grisham was the financial advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. On his name is something known as the Grisham's Law, and it essentially states that bad money drives out good money. Let's say a silver coin, you know, was worth 100 cents, and that coin had 100% silver in it. So the king or the queen would decide, okay, from now on, this coin would only have 80% silver, but it would still be worth 100 cents. And he would mix it with 20% copper. Now, copper, as you would understand, is a base metal, hence the term debasement. The moral is, you know, the moment the purchasing power of money starts to go down, people look at various ways to ensure that they manage to hold on to the purchasing power of the wealth that they have already accumulated. Okay. What's this thing about gold? It's part of our DNA. Whether we like it or not, it's part of our DNA. It's created havoc in the current account management, and we have this new term called the CAD, and everybody overseas asks me, what is CAD? And I tell them it's current account deficit. We are created, you know, at condensing little, little words. Uh, so we say, fine, we've done what I call band-aid therapy. Uh, when I have a problem, I need to solve it very quickly. I need to stem the bleeding. Full marks to the regulator. They've done it. They've done a brilliant job. I may not agree with everything that they've done, but I recognize that it needed some actions, and they've taken actions. So now you stop the bleeding, but are you addressing the primary issue? Are you addressing the malaise? Are you addressing the problem? And our question, therefore, to the regulator is, what do you wish to do in 2014? What do you wish to do in 2015? How do you view this? Can you please give us a long-term approach to this? And uh, if you do that, it will help the manufacturing sector. That's us. And I'm sure Bhaskar sitting over there will be delighted also to know exactly what the regulator believes is the best way to manage it. We sympathize with the regulator. We think they've got a devil of a job ahead of them. But uh, I think the stage for Band-Aid is over. Now we need to see it differently. So when you see it differently, what do you look at? Uh, you say, please don't be reactive. Be proactive. This has been stated to me by the finance minister himself. I had said that the unintended consequence of the regulatory measures are a premium in the Indian market as well as an encouragement of smuggling. The finance minister chose to say it is the intended consequence of the government of India to restrict import of gold for domestic manufacture. Therefore, the premium is being paid by the customer. Okay. The point about the Indian customer is this is a 2,000 year old commodity. Jewelry industry employs 10 million people at the back end, 10 million people in the front end, which is at retail and in, in the carigars. The most exploited, unlike the factory that he runs, the most exploited in this are the carigars. In the last five years, this is the one metal which has actually not shown even once a negative return in India, okay, as opposed to other asset classes, and it has shown the best, best return in three of the five years. 
And that's something which the common man understands. He may not understand complicated things like currency appreciation and hedge against currency appreciation. First of all, let's look at the number of regulators in this industry. This industry is regulated by an incredible number of ministries and regulators. You need to have, and this I, the Prime Minister had mentioned when he was the Finance Minister many, many years back in the early 90s, that we need to have something called the Bullion Corporation kind of a thing, which is the one body, apex body, which tries to define policies and guide the government. We don't want to get into what the role of the corporation will be. That will be another debate uh, on, on gold itself. Warren Buffett, what he says about the gold. Gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or some place. Then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again, and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. Anyone watching from Mars would be scratching their head. Unfortunately, in India, we are not scratching our head. <laughs> Indian must stop giving dowry to their daughter-in-law in terms of the gold. Don't accept gold and stop giving gold to the temples. All those people have said that gold is a thing. Poor man's gold only goes to the temple or to the money lender. They said that 500 tons of jewelry, gold has created gold loaning company. They are not gold loaning company. They are purchasing gold at discount. If gold is such a great instrument in the last five years, it has given so safe return. Why somebody has to lend against gold at 20%, 30%, I don't understand. Idea is only this. You take the gold from the poor people, charge 30% interest, in six months it will become NPA, then I will sell, back, sell the gold at discount. And that is what not the financing company, this is purchasing gold at discount. If it is not there, absolutely let them do business. I have absolutely no problem. But as an economist, I have a problem. That how come it is a 30% lending against gold, even where against a security or a lending against 20%? If it is such a great thing which you say, give a return. 